The big movie story of the year has really been Barbenheimer. Uh, Oppenheimer recently crossed the $700 million mark. It recently joined the top 10 highest grossing R-rated films ever. And it's getting up to the, like the number six, five, four. It's closing in on the Deadpool movies. Might even cross those. I didn't think it would get to Deadpool levels, but it may very well get to the Deadpool levels. It's been great, but Barbie. It's Barbie's world and we're just living in it. <laughs> As it uh, shattered all sorts of records, and today, Barbie passes Mario Brothers as the number one domestic box office take of the year. This is from our friends over at Joe Blow. The headline there, Barbie to overtake Super Mario Brothers movie is the highest gross movie of the year at the domestic box office. They quote this, sorry, Mario. It's Barbie's world now. Per deadline, Barbie will overtake the Super Mario Brothers movie to become the year's highest grossing movie at the domestic box office. This Wednesday, that is today, will pass that mark and will take in a haul $574.2 million. It's probably even going to be a little bit higher than that. But today, that's it. The domestic mark is down. Now that's all in front of it is the more important number, which is the overall worldwide. Mario Brothers is still sitting at about $70 million ahead of Barbie. Uh, it will probably beat that this weekend. I mean, it's going to be closer than we thought it was going to be maybe a week or so ago, but it's probably going to pass it at that point. Rob, I think it's safe to say, if we go back to the beginning of the year, and we, if we had a discussion about what are going to be the top two box office films of the year, I don't think a year ago, Mario Brothers or Barbie would have been in that conversation. I think we would have been, and we did talk, we would have been talking about things like Fast X, Guardians of the Galaxy. You did, though, about Mario. <laughs> well, but not a year ago. It, it wasn't until about three or four months before Mario came That's out true. that I called it. Because I started to see everything. But a year ago, it wouldn't have been on my list. That's true. I, I, okay. I, I, so I don't want to take too much credit there. Because a year ago, I would not have thought that. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video. Mint Mobile. Signing your life away to a big wireless provider is kind of like being trapped on a roller coaster from hell. Sure, it looks like fun at first. They probably even threw in a free phone, but now you can't get off. Month after month of insane bills and unexpected thrills, like overages and surprise fees. If that sounds like your current big wireless plan, it's time to get off the ride with Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just 15 bucks a month. You guys know before, I came to Mint Mobile, I was paying triple what I am paying now on the standard big wireless plan, and I will never go back. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped right to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com dot com slash campia cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia so number one what do you think about that like mario uh, barbie coming out of nowhere and how significant how big of a deal is it that barbie is now at least the domestic box office has now crossed mario brothers well i think it's, it's interesting that both of these are based on beloved toy video game franchises that have spanned multiple generations and it shows how ingrained i think that these look if if these movies weren't first of all good right they wouldn't have succeeded and i think it shows that i was surprised um mario was what i expected but barbie surprised me in terms of uh just how sophisticated it actually was and and that there was a lot more going on in the barbie movie than i thought um and I think that's why audiences have loved that film. I mean, Mario Mario Brothers gave people what they hoped it would give them. I mean, the fact that it made $100 million in Japan, it shows that Japanese audiences, hometown audience, home field advantage, but it, it did them proper. It, it showed that respect to the character. So it, it, it deserved to do well. Right. Barbie, to me, I was like, I don't know, man. But again, not just Barbenheimer, that got people into the theater. But it was the way that the movie resonated with audiences, and it, it was actually about something. And after you left the theater, you could have arguments or discussions. There was something to. T I would not have thought, John, that I could sit over a, an entire meal, which I did over dinner, and have a conversation that lasted two hours about the meaning of Barbie. 
<laughs> I would not have thought that that would have been something that would have happened in my life, but here we are. And I think that, that, you know, people have gone back. You've got, again, the female audience, not just, I mean, men went too, but the female audience, mothers and daughters, kind of like when Captain Marvel made over a billion dollars. Right. It's an audience that I think is underserved, especially when it comes to IP and, and it just worked. And the fact that they had, you know, you have Greta Gerwig, who I would call her an auteur. She wrote a script with her partner, Noah Baumbach. They wrote something that was probably better than that movie even deserved. No, she, it's, she's a three-time Academy Award-nominated filmmaker. Absolutely. So you've got uh, uh, one of our best filmmakers who teamed up with another one of our great filmmakers together coming up with this property. You had a star in Margot Robbie, you know, who's obviously been battered a little bit at the box office, although no one would say that she isn't a great actress, who put herself on the line for this, rescuing it, a, a project that was sort of stuck in development hell. I mean, maybe, remember when Amy Schumer was going to be Barbie? Well, and then after Amy Schumer's Barbie, Anne Hathaway was attached yeah. to be Barbie and went through like a whole ton of development hell iterations, finally landing with Margot Robbie. And I think in a way, Barbie is kind of, it represents the best of Hollywood because you had an actor sign on who, I don't know if, they conv if she convinced uh, people to come on board, but they all willed this into happening and the studio allowed them to go with their vision. You know, it could have had a lot of studio interference. And I'm sure that <laughs> it was just, to me, it's an example of how this business can work and still surprise people, still make great entertainment. And I'm sure the cynics are going to be talking for years to come about how, well, it was a perfect storm in Barbenheimer and it wouldn't work. But no, Barbie at the end of the day was an interesting film that was probably more interesting than it should have been because it had people who believed in it and they made the movie that they were allowed to make. And look where they got. Here's an interesting stat for you uh, th th to really understand, like the 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 seismic shift that's kind of happened in the landscape here. Again, let's go back to if we were going back a year. In its fifth weekend, which was this just this past weekend, in its fifth weekend at the box office, fifth, Barbie almost made as much in its fifth weekend as a brand new opening weekend DC major superhero film. With Blue Beetle making twenty five million at the box office, and Barbie in its fifth weekend made twenty one million dollars at the box. I mean, that is staying power. I mean, Ray, we went to go see Blue Beetle, and there were still people in its fifth weekend there in pink. You know, you guys, forty five percent of the audience, by the way, according to Variety, forty five percent of the audience has gone to see Barbie were male. I mean, that's still a, a big, heavy majority. At sixty five percent, or uh, uh, yeah, sixty five percent for uh, no thirty five. 55 percent yeah. let me try that again 55 percent of the audience was female but a lot of men were going and enjoying this film and now it's crossing mario brothers and now i guess the clock is just on as to when will it catch mario for the overall world lead and then the question is I, we were asked this question the other day rob about is there any film left this year that has the possibility of catching it i say the only film that has a chance is going to be dune 2 because, you know, the last one won six Academy Awards. The audience loved it. It made $400 million in the box office, despite the fact that it was released on HBO the exact same day. And it still made $400 million at the box office. I don't know that Dune 2 is going to catch Barbie. Yeah, no. But if there's any one that has the chance, I think that's going to be the one. I just, the thing about Dune is it doesn't have the same kind of family crossover appeal. No, it's going to be a totally different demographic. Yeah, to totally get. different demographic. But, uh, you know, I think Barbie is a once-in-a-lifetime film. But you know what? It shows that these movies, it's not enough to be an IP-derived film anymore. It still has to be an IP-derived auteurist film. You still need great directors and great writers on these properties. And I think that's something that's been forgotten. And maybe people look to Barbie. If you want to take a lesson away from that, you know, if you're going to make, I'm waiting for the Ganip Ganop movie. And if somebody tries to make the Ganip Ganop movie, you better get a writer, director, and a star who are really behind Ganip Ganop to make sure that it turns out to be the movie it should be. Now, I don't think any of us are going to say that Mario was an Artur movie per se, but I think if you want to make movies like Barbie, but then I think yeah. the, the animation studio though certainly had. Oh, the Illumination did a terrific job yeah. uh, on the look and the feel of that. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show Podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.